I have been involved in sport all my life, either playing it or teaching it. And one of the things that's always intrigued me is this word timing. And judging by some of the comments that I'm getting on the channel, it intrigues you as well. Is it the holy grail of snooker? Well, once you can deliver that cue in a straight line and you can pop balls, you need to be able to position this thing, this cue ball, exactly where you intend to do it. Now, good players, they know how to achieve timing. They know that they've got to relax. They know that they've got to get through the ball. They know that they've got to generate Q-tip speed as they're hitting and getting through the ball. And they know that they've got to hang on to it. Right? That tells us how to achieve timing. And good players, they know when they've timed the ball correctly. Yeah, all those points are very relevant. My real question is, what is timing? What is it? That's the thing, that is the phrase that intrigued me. Now for me, it's all about the length of time of contact between the thing you're hitting, i.e. the cue ball, and the thing you're hitting it with, the cue tip. Now if you can prolong that contact time, yeah, the timing will be better. Now obviously you have to be a little careful here, you know, because the closer you get to a push shot, and obviously a push shot is a foul, but the closer you get to that push shot without it actually being a push shot, then I believe that the timing will be better. Now I've told you what I believe it is, and I have tried to prove it, not only to myself, but to other people. And we have been very, very fortunate to borrow a special camera. Now, a normal video camera will record, so Phil tells me, at 25 frames a second. Yeah, you cannot tell in terms of measurement uh, how long there is contact time between Q-tip and Q-ball when you are videoing at 25 frames a second. So we tried it at 3,000 frames a second, and we still couldn't tell. But what we did then, with the aid of this camera, is we did the video in and then analyzed it at 35,000 frames per second. Yeah, and then we had it analyzed by an expert. And he determined that there is a difference between the contact time between the Q-tip and cue ball. When you hit the cue ball, shall we say, badly, as opposed to hitting it well. We were also very fortunate to get the gain the uh, to employ the services of Michael Holt. Now Michael is a very well-known professional, been around in the game for a lot of years, with the highest ranking of, I believe, 20 in the world. So this guy knows what he's talking about, and he knows when he's hit the ball well. And we recorded his his uh, ability of hitting the ball, and we asked him to tell us when he was satisfied with when he hit the ball well. So we, we, we did half a dozen shots, and he says, I've hit that ball nicely, but I can hit it better. Then he's hit it again and again and again until he says, yes, I really hit that ball well. I'm really pleased with that one. And then we analysed, or rather our expert did, we analysed the very, very good shot as opposed to the mediocre shot, and we determined that on average there was 200 microseconds difference in length of time of contact. Now, in general terms, when I've talked about timing, I've talked about milliseconds. Well, without really, underst really understanding what a millisecond was, well, we've really done a little bit of research, and we know that a millisecond is uh, a thousandth of a second. Now, a microsecond is a thousandth of a millisecond. So you can, it's one millionth of a second. Now, that's infinitesimally small, if that's a, the right phrase that I'm looking at. You certainly can't see it 
at normal speed. You can't even see it in, in normal slow motion. But I'll tell you what, that good player, he can feel it. He knows when he's hit that ball well, and he will tell you. All right, and I, I have been fortunate at the academy to be with Ronnie O'Sullivan and other top professional, professionals. And I don't know whether it's these hearing aids or what, but I'll tell you what, I know when he's hit it well through the sound that the, the, the collision makes, yeah? As I say, we recorded at 35,000 frames a second. Yeah, and I was so impressed with what we saw. Now I've been criticized, and yeah, everybody is, it's from time to time, by people on the channel saying that I was talking a load of rubbish by uh, saying that uh, the Q-tip is in contact with the cue ball longer. Well, I never accepted that. I always felt, I always, I just knew that, you know, people would say that uh, you cannot retain that contact time. I always just knew that you could somehow. I couldn't prove it until we got this camera. Now, uh, we hope to borrow that camera again in the near future, and this time we will have really definitive measurements. Yeah, so, but uh, as a sort of a feeler, just to give you some ideas, and to get your comments coming in, good or bad, you know, saying I'm talking a load of rubbish, I don't mind, it's all open for debate, all right? But equally, you know, I just know, I just know that, uh, you know, once you've, you've got that time and you have increased that contact time. So we're gonna give you a sample um, of those recordings. Please bear in mind that we, we're hoping to do it later on in the year when we get the camera back. And with this time, the next time we will have uh, definitive measurements, you know, so it can really prove it. But I just want to emphasize that the recordings we did, they were analyzed by an expert. And I can assure you there is a big difference when you time that ball correctly. Mm -hmm.